Okay, uh, on the previous classes we have been uh, looking the waves, which is the basic uh, for everything. Uh, and today we'll see the basic electricity. Uh, this basic electricity class is in the last class, which is wave as a preparation for you to understand the electrotherapy. So we'll start from the very beginning from uh, charge, how charge is generated and how uh, it could be uh, interpreted as a current when it flows. So we'll start from the uh, basic uh, charge. So uh, all uh, matter is made up of uh, elements and the elements are made up of uh, particles, uh, subatomic particles. And these particles are called electrons, uh, protons, and neutrons. Uh, there are uh, subatomic particles below these electrons, neutrons, and uh, protons, which are called quarks. But uh, for it is uh, enough to understand the protons, neutrons, and electrons. Uh, in terms of uh, charge, uh, the protons are positively charged, uh, the neutrons are neutral, and the electrons are negatively charged. So at resting states, uh, the atom is, uh, uh, is uh, I mean, uh, neutral because the number of uh, protons and the number of electrons is uh, the same. Uh, so since protons is positively charged and electrons negatively charged, uh, this positive and the negative will cancel each other. So at resting state, uh, without any interaction with another atom, the atom uh, is called uh, neutral. Uh, but uh, there is interaction, one atom will interact with another atom and due to this interaction electrons uh, will be displaced to the other atoms and the atom that loses electrons will be called positively charged and the atom uh, which gains electrons will be uh, negatively charged. So due to this electron displacement atom uh, will be ionized, either it will be uh, positively charged or it will be uh, negatively uh, charged. Uh, so this uh, charge is measured in terms of uh, Coulomb. Uh, one electron uh, has a charge of like 1.6 times uh, 10 to the power of minus 19 uh, Coulomb. So to produce or to have a one Coulomb, we need to have like 6.28 times 10 to the power of eight electrons, 18 electrons. Uh, so charge is measured in terms of Coulomb and one Coulomb uh, is equivalent to uh, the charge of 6.28 times 10 to the power of 18 um, electrons. Uh, so the atom is neutral. When it loses electrons, it will be positively charged and it can be called a cation. Uh, when it loses electron, it will be called uh, anion or it will be negatively charged and that is uh, the charge. If it loses one electron, it will have like this amount of charge. It, if it gains uh, one electron, it will be uh, this amount of charge but with opposite polarity. If it loses, it will be uh, positively charged and it, if it gains, it will be negatively charged. Uh, so uh, these like charges, if they are positive, they will be uh, repel each other, like positive, positive will repel each other, or negative, negative will repel each other. If the uh, charges are opposite, they will attract each other. So according to uh, this principle, the Columbus law says that, uh, they say that there, there will be a force between uh, two uh, charges, uh, because these charges uh, will produce forces, so the force, one uh, force and the other force uh, either will repel each other or they will be attracted to each other. And due to this, the Columbus law says uh, the force that is uh, created between two charges is directly proportional to the product of um, the charges divided by the distance between them. So uh, it will be directly proportional to the charges and inversely proportional to the distance between them. So if the charge uh, of two electrons is higher, the force that will be created between them also will, will be also higher. If the distance increases, uh, the force between them will be uh, very less. So the constant of proportionality is called K. Uh, it is equivalent to nine times 10 to the power of minus nine Newton meter square per Coulomb square. So uh, by using this uh, proportionality constant and 
the charges plus the distance between them. Efforts can be calculated between uh, two uh, charged, charged particles or two charges. Uh, so due to this force, there will be a field. That field is called electric field. Uh, so the field, uh, uh, in that field, if there is an external charge, it will be affected due to this force. Uh, either it will be refilled or it will be attracted. So between uh, two positively charged and negatively charged uh, uh, electrons or protons, there will be a field, and uh, that field could be determined in terms of the force between them uh, divided by uh, the charge, either the positive, positive charge or either the negative charge. So the direction of uh, this electric field is away from the positive charges, and it is inside or towards to the negative charges. And the principle of this electric field lines is uh, they neither branch uh, nor interact one another. They will flow from the positive charge to the negative charge. So if there is external uh, charge, if it is placed between this electric field, it will either repel to one charge or it will be attracted to another charge. So this electric field E, it is directional, it has a direction. The direction is away from the positive charge and it is into the negative charge. And it can be calculated by dividing the force uh, divided by Q or the charge that we consider. So since force is defined in terms of uh, the two charges, the multiplication of two charges, Q, which is one charge, and uh, capital Q, another charge, divide, th times this uh, co constant, divided by the distance between them over the charge that uh, we uh, consider, it will give us K times Q over uh, the distance between them. So electric field E, it have a direction, and it can be calculated by multiplying the proportional constant K times the charge divided by uh, D square. So there is a force between two charges, and there is an electric field between uh, these charges. So if you place some external charge, you need to apply some work or some force uh, either to push or uh, to pull that charge to towards some required point. And that is defined in terms of electric potential, which is called V or uh, voltage. So electric potential is the amount of work needed to move a charge from a reference point to the other point. If you put like two charges, one is a positive charge, for example, and the other is a negative charge, and if you uh, want to move a charge that's placed between them, either towards the positive or towards the negative, you need to apply external uh, potential energy or external uh, energy, and that is called the potential energy. It is the energy uh, or the amount of work that is needed to move a charge from a reference point to a specific point inside uh, the electric field. Uh, so this potential energy, or V, it is calculated by dividing the work divided by the charge, Q. Or V can be calculated like energy E divided by the Q, and it is measured in terms of volt, call it potential, and it's equivalent to joule per coulomb. So this is the potential, what you call it, the electric potential, or the voltage. Uh, this is due to move any charge that is placed in the electric field. So if the charges are moved, we'll get like a sense of current the flow of charges will give us current. It is the basic for uh, electricity. There is a potential, which is a force that pushes the charges, and the movement of these charges is called uh, current. So we have this electric current, uh, which is the flow of electric charges. These charges, uh, this uh, flow is caused by the electric potential V, 
and the flow is called current. It, could be, it, is, it is measured in terms of ampere. So electric current is a flow of electric charge. Uh, uh, charges can be transferred or carried by uh, electrons in metal because uh, there are free electrons in metal, but if there are no free electrons, like for example in wood, we don't have uh, free electrons, so uh, charges cannot be created and there is nothing to push or pull by applying a voltage V. So uh, to create a current or to move the current through uh, some paths, the path should be uh, metal or it should have a free electron. Uh, so this current is measured in terms of uh, the rate of uh, flow of this uh, Q divided by T or the rate of uh, flow of charge is called uh, current. So the cause of the flow of this charge is the potential or we call it the voltage and the flow with respect to use some unit time is called the current I and it's measured in terms of ampere which is equivalent to one coulomb per second. Uh, most of the time people understand current and voltage as the same but they are different. Voltage is the, the energy that pushes the uh, charges to flow and the flow of this charge is called uh, the current. For example, you can consider a plug, the electrical outlets. It have a potential, but if you if you don't insert any uh, plug to it, there will be no current. But it have a potential. As uh, as without any uh, electrical outlet or without any electrical uh, plug there will be no current because the current don't have a path to flow, but it have a potential. So this can be considered as a potential or a voltage. If you insert a plug to it, you will get a current because there will be a path for the current to flow. And that uh, flow is caused by the voltage V. But by applying only the voltage, uh, it's not al uh, always possible uh, to acquire uh, the any amount of flow of charge without any resistance. There is a resistance. For example, uh, when a water flows uh, in a small uh, or uh, narrow tube, there will be a resistance of flow. Like, like that in the current also, uh, the charge will be resisted by uh, the the resistance, which is called resistance, that's uh, created on the path or on the electrical line. And it's called the resistance, which is the resistance or the difficulty uh, to pass an electric current through a conductor. It's called the resistance. So there is a voltage, which is the energy that pushes the charges towards this, uh, this path, and the resistance is the difficulty or uh, the thing that resists the flow of these charges. So we have mainly three concepts, voltage, current, and the resistance in electric system mainly. The voltage is the cause of or the energy that pushes the charges, and uh, the flow of charges is called the current, and the thing that resists this flow of charges is called a resistance. So if there is a high resistance, you need to apply a high voltage or a high force to move the electrons to the required point. So as resistance increases, the voltage that you need to apply also should be high. So resistance is the property of, or the innate property of the material. It is uh, calculated in terms of the resistivity of a material. Uh, for example, uh, metal have low resistivity, wood, uh, it will have high resistivity, uh, so the resistance will be high in wood than a metal. So it can be calculated the resistivity times the length of the conductor in meters divided by the area or the cross-sectional area of that uh, conductor. 
So it is inversely proportional to the area. As the area increases, the resistivity will decrease. And as the length is increases, the resistivity or the resistance of the material also will increase. So by considering these three concepts, we have a law which is called Ohm's law. Um, resistance is measured in terms of ohms, and the person who uh, proposes the law is called, uh, this law is called ohms, and, and the law is ohms, ohm's law. So uh, he said the current through a conductor between two points is directly proportional to the voltage across the two points. So if the voltage increases, the flow of current also uh, will increase. And if there is, there is high resistance, the current will be uh, low. So V, which is the potential difference or the voltage uh, or the energy that pushes the charges, it is equivalent to I times R, I is the current, and R is the resistance. So you can calculate current using this formula, which is potential difference divided by the resistance. It makes sense. As the resistance increases, the flow of current also will be low. And the resistance also can be calculated like voltage divided by uh, current I as uh, the voltage, I mean, the current I increases. The resistance yeah, doesn't depend on the current and voltage, uh, but the voltage depends on the resistance and the current depends on the voltage and the resistance. So resistors can be connected in different uh, ways depending on the circuit that uh, you need to uh, design for a different application. So resistance, uh, resistors can be uh, connected in series or in parallel. Uh, if they are connected in parallel, the total resistance can be calculated by just the summation of this individual resistance. So R equivalent or R total will be like, for example, in this case, R1 plus R2 plus R3. This is uh, the way uh, where resistance are connected in series. R1 is in series with R2, it is in series with R3. And this is a symbol for the potential difference V, voltage V. So due to this potential difference, there will be a flow of current through this circuit, but it will be resisted by these resistors. So as the resistance increases, the flow of current also uh, will decrease due to this resistance, or the amount of voltage you need to apply uh, will increase due to this. When you connect uh, uh, resistors in parallel, the equivalent resistance, resistance or the total resistance can be calculated this way, 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Or you can say, one over R total will be equivalent to one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3. And the total uh, will be like R1, R2, R3 divided by R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R2, R3. This is the total resistance R total when they are connected in parallel. So the same way, if the resistance increases, the amount of potential that you need to apply also uh, should be very high. It should be, uh, you need to, to get high voltage uh, to pass a current through this circuit. Uh, so, if you calculate like a resistance either like in parallel or in series, after calculating the total resistance, you can calculate like the current. For example, the current that flows through this circuit can be calculated like the potential difference V at this point divided by the total resistance will give you the current that flows through this circuit. And the current that flows through this old circuit also can be calculated after you calculate the equivalent resistance R1, R2, R3 through this way. And by dividing the voltage with this resistance, you can calculate the current that flows through this circuit. Uh, resistors can be connected in different way. 
for example, they can be conducted in uh, series and uh, parallel combination. Like on this circuit, uh, this R1 is connected in series with parallel connected resistors R2 and R3. So to uh, find the total resistance, uh, resistance in this case, you need to find the equivalent resistance R2 and R3 first, and the equivalent resistor, resistor will be equivalent to or in series with R1. So in this case, like the total resistance will be R total will be R2 in parallel with R3, and it will be in series with R1. So first you should calculate the equivalent resistor for these parallel connected resistors. So for this, 1 over R1, uh, 3 will be equivalent to 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. So the equivalent resistance between 3 and 2 will be R2 R3 divided by R2 plus R3. So this is the equivalent resistor, resistance for the uh, parallel connected resistors. So, so the total resistance will be R total equivalent to this resistance, which is R2 R3 plus R1. So after calculating this RT, you can calculate the current if the voltage is given. So the current that flows through the circuit, through this circuit, can be calculated by dividing this voltage with the total resistance R. So let's do a few exercises to understand this concept. So in the first exercise, a circuit has three resistors, R1, R2, and R3 with a given resistance values. Uh, and the potential difference at the supply voltage is given 12 volt. And if these resistance are connected in series, you are asked to determine the amount of current that flows through the circuit. If they are in parallel also, or in the third case, if R2 is in series with parallel connected resistors R1 and R3. So in three cases, you are asked to determine the total current that flows through the circuit. So first, you need to determine the total resistance in each case, the first case, the second case, and the third case. Then by calculating that the potential voltage with the total resistance, you can calculate the current I. So in the first, in the A, you are asked to calculate the total current when the resistors are connected in parallel, I mean in series. So if they are connected in series, the total resistance can be calculated by the summation of the three resistors, R1 plus R2 plus R3, and it would be equivalent to 815, right? 850 ohms. So the current I that flows through this circuit will be equivalent to the voltage divided by the total resistance at total, and it will be 12 divided by 815 ohms. So you can draw the equivalent circuit for 
this one like there is one voltage and one resistance R total and the current flows through this circuit I. So the first one is simple. And the second, uh, when the resistors are connected in parallel, so the circuit, there is a voltage and the resistors are connected in parallel. So like R1, R2, R3. So you are asked to calculate the current that flows through this circuit I. The current that flows through the individual resistance would be different, but you are asked to calculate the total current that flows through uh, this, the whole circuit. So if they are connected in parallel, the total resistance will be equivalent to R1, R2, R3 divided by R1, R2 plus R1, R3 plus R3, R2. So after calculating this total resistance this way, uh, it can be represented by a single resistance, R total. There is a voltage and there is a current and that flows through this circuit. So I, which is the required one, can be calculated by dividing the voltage by resistance R the same way. So for the first, the value for the current will be 0 0.014 ampere or 40 milliampere. For the second one, the total resistance will be uh, 62.5 ohms and the total current will be 192 milliampere. If, if the third case, if R2 is connected in C parallel connected resistance R2 and R3, the circuit will be like We have voltage V and R2 is connected in series with parallel connected resistance R1 and R3. So the best way to, to, to find the total resistance is first to find the equivalent resistance for parallel connected resistors R1 and R3. Uh, then for this case, the total resistance R total for 1 and 3 will be uh, R1, R3 divided by R1 plus R3. So after calculating this one, the circuit will become, if there is a voltage V, there is R2, and this R2 is is seriously connected with the equivalent resistances R1 and R3. So after you calculate this one, you can add with R2, the total resistance R total will be, for this case, R2 plus the equivalent resistance of R1 and R3. Then current again will become V over R total, the current that flows through this circuit, I. So the value will be, the total resistance will be 571.4 ohms and the current will be 21 milliampere. Okay, can you try this one?
Okay, so what you do is first uh, calculate the equivalent resistance uh, for this two L ohm and six ohm because they are connected in para. Then the equivalent resistance will be the summation of uh, this five ohm, the equivalent resistance between this and six plus three. So all will be connected in series, so it's simple to calculate the uh, total resistance and it will be three plus six plus four, which is 80. No, uh, yeah, ATO. Uh, that is my last lecture. I will be moving tomorrow, so I hope you enjoyed my lectures as I enjoyed your participation. Have a good time. <laughs>
Wednesday. Um, okay. Okay, I will do that. Um, Have a good song, we can say.